All right, in today's lesson, lesson seven of the Keys to the Masroth, we're going to be looking at the sign of Delhi, otherwise known as the sign of Aquarius, which is the water bucket. Okay, so first of all, let's familiarize ourselves again with the layout of the heavens. Um, here is Aquarius with the water bucket. You see that it's spilling southward and it's spilling onto Pisces Australis, the southern fish. And uh, the minor constellations for this sign, it's going to be this uh, fish down here, the southern fish, Pisces Australis. Pegasus, the flying horse right here, it's upside down. Um, and then Cygnus, the swan. And we're going to take a look at this and we're going to find that, that there was another um, uh, figure here, not a swan, but in Arabia, it was known as the eagle. Altair, the flying eagle. And, and that's most likely its its correct uh, representation, but we'll get into that in, in a little bit further in our presentation. Okay, so now let's look at our Hebrew elements. Uh, again, this is the biblical interpretation of Aquarius, the water bearer, and it's going to relate to judgment being poured out on the house of Judah, represented here by this southern fish. Now, we read here from uh, star names, their lore and meaning, uh, from Richard Allen Hinckley. He says, this constellation has been represented from time immemorial as a man pouring water from a bucket or an urn, the human figure sometimes being omitted. So that was new to me. I always thought the human figure was there, but apparently at other times it was just the bucket. And in fact, the Hebrew name for this sign, which is Delhi, implies simply a bucket, not a water pour, but just a bucket. And, and of course, the water being poured out by an unseen hand. <laughs> so well, that's interesting. Um, in a larger sense, it was said to represent the creator, the pour forth of water upon the earth. Okay, now an urn, so it's a, it's a water bucket or an urn. It could be either. Uh, an urn means, or it can mean a container for hot drinks or a symbol of death. So that's from uh, Cambridge Dictionary. Okay, so again, the Hebrew elements for this sign. So in Hebrew, it's Delhi. Uh, its corresponding Hebrew tribe is Reuben. See, a son, unstable as water, is what uh, his father Jacob said of Reuben. He's unstable as water. And here you have water being poured out. So there's a direct correlation right there. You can see that. Uh, the Hebrew month, well, first of all, the word deli, it means figuratively to draw out, to uh, deliver, or languish, to bring low. So those are all very interesting um, definitions uh, that this sign is represented by or, or how it's interpreted, defined. And then we have the Hebrew month. This is the uh, month Shabbat, and it, it represents a rod or correction, heavy rains, this is during the rainy season, to storm, so it's related to that. And then we have the Hebrew, um, we have the Hebrew letter, the all significant Hebrew letter for this sign. And these letters, as you know, as we've been going through these um, lessons, one after the other, these signs, they, they are represented by these Hebrew letters, which are very meaningful because every letter has a meaning and it has like a mantra value to it. Here it's the number nine. It's the ninth letter and it has a value of nine. Here is the paleo, the way the paleo version of this letter was drawn. And then of course we have the glyph, uh, which is uh, waves of water here. Okay, so now we got all the key elements. Let's uh, go on now to our next sign. So again, this is, this is the main thing we're looking at right now is right here, the significance of this water bucket or urn pouring out this water on this southern fish. So now listen to this. According to Abraham Ibn Ezra, one of the most distinguished Jewish biblical commentators and philosophers of the Middle Ages, he says Aquarius is the sign of the Jewish people. <laughs> wow, look at that. Aquarius is the sign of the Jewish people because this is the southern fish corresponding to the southern kingdom of Judah. And this water being poured out on Judah. So 
we read in Jeremiah 1. Now, when I first saw this, uh, this was brought out in Tim Warner's book again, uh, The Mystery of the Masroth. I thought, wow, he really nailed it on this one because it's so clear. I mean, I, I can't think of a more clearer definition for a zodiac sign straight from the Bible than this one. I mean, it just straight out tells you what it is. Then Yahuwah asked me, talking to Jeremiah, what do you see now? And I replied, I see a pot of boiling water, there's our urn, tipping southward, tipping southward, spilling over Judah. Yes, he said, for terror from the north will boil out upon all the people of this land. I am calling the armies of the kingdom of the north to come to Jerusalem and set their thrones at the gates of the city and all along its walls and all along its walls and in all the other cities of Judah. So this all applies to Judah, this water pot, pot that's tipping southward and spilling onto Judah. This is not a blessing being poured out. This is judgment being poured out. The armies from the north are going to come. Well, who's coming from the north? It's Babylon, and which led Judah into captivity, right? Into Babylon for 70 years. It's <laughs> You can't get more clear. There's no misinterpretation here. It's, it's There it is right there. This is the way I will punish my people for deserting me and for worshiping other gods. Yes, idols they themselves have made. So there you have it, Jeremiah 1, 13 through 16. This is the Living Bible Translation. All right, so let's look at this judgment being poured out on Babylon. So it says, again, in the ninth year, now here comes this number. Now, remember, this sign is represented by the letter Tet, and it has a value of nine. So the number nine, just like the number eight in Capricorn and the number seven in Sagittarius, you know, that number takes us right to the starting point of, of this story as it relates to Judah going into captivity, into Babylon. And this occurred in the ninth year. So again, in the ninth year, in the 10th month, in the 10th day of the month, the word of Yahuwah came unto me, saying, Son of man, write thee the name of this day, even this same day, the king of Babylon set himself against Jerusalem, this same day, and utter a parable unto the rebellious house, and say unto them, Thus says Yahuwah Elohim, uh, set on a pot, set it on fire. Now, now this, this passage here is going to tell you the contents of what's being poured out on this southern fish. So he says, set on a pot, set it on, and also pour water into it. Okay, we got water. Gather the pieces thereof into it, even every good piece, the thigh and the shoulder, uh, shoulder, fill it with the choice bones. Take the choice of the flock and burn also the bones under it and make it boil well and let them seethe the bones of it therein. Wherefore, thus saith Yahuwah Elohim, woe to the bloody city, that's Jerusalem, to the pot whose scum is therein, and whose scum is not gone out of it. Bring it out piece by piece, let no lot fall upon it. Now, if you look up the word scum, as I did, the Hebrew word for scum in this passage is shalah, if I'm saying that correctly. It means to be sick. Be diseased. Well, that brought my attention back to Isaiah 1. <laughs> uh, all a sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity, a seed of evildoers, children that are corruptors. They have forsaken Yahuwah. They have provoked the Holy One of Israel unto anger. They are gone away backward. Why should you be stricken anymore? You will revolt more and more. The whole head is sick and the whole heart faint. And this is, so th this is so appropriate. I mean, whose scum is in it because they are, they were sick. They were rebellious, right? And, and that's why this is being poured out back upon themselves. Um, and we see again in Isaiah, um, uh, I mean, in, in uh, Amos 5.24, it says, but let judgment run down as waters. So just because, I mean, most people when they in, who study the Masroth or teach about the Masroth again, uh, and I had this understanding initially too, so I can't fault them for that. It just requires more diligent study and being willing to change your mind when you get more information. You guys know all about that. 
Um, but so it doesn't always mean this blessing or the Holy Spirit being poured out in, or, or, or go to a man or go to a house, you know, and, and follow the man that has a pot, you know, people go that direction. Um, it's right here. It, this is Judah, the southern fish, the southern kingdom, and the armies from, and then it's a pot tipping southward away from the north. So it's coming from the north, going south to Judah. That, that was Babylon coming down and and taken Judah into captivity, right? So that you rarely see this interpretation of Aquarius in any other book. I've never seen it. The only other book, like I said, was in Tim Warner's book, Mystery of the Masterbob. So kudos to him. I love that he, he discovered that. I can't take credit there. Uh, but let judgment run down as waters and righteousness as a mighty stream. So as I've mentioned before, many of these constellations, they have dual uh, applications. It's not just one thing. And, and so water can be a blessing. It can also be a curse. Um, and it could be righteousness being poured out, right, as a mighty stream and, into his people. And that would be a good thing, too. But uh, judgment comes first. <laughs> Um, and the princes of Judah were like them that removed the bound. Therefore, I will pour out my wrath upon them like water. So here's wrath being poured out like water. Now, look what I found in the area of Aquarius in the, in the firmament. Uh, again, whether these images are there or not, I do not know but I bring it out just because maybe it is there. Um, and, and, and the reason I bring them out, I don't bring all of them out, but the reason I bring out the ones that I have selected for this presentation is because they fit so perfectly with the story that's being told. So in Aquarius, we have this water bucket and it's tipping southward. Here you have a pot, right, tipping southward. So this was discovered, it says it was discovered by Sir William Herschel on September 7, 1782. Well, that sounds pretty official to me. So if that's there, that's pretty amazing. But now let's go deeper. So I speculate here, might this be a representation of the boiling pot that Ezekiel saw full of the curses that were poured out upon the southern kingdom of Judah for all their wickedness in departing from Yahuwah? The strange looking object within the pot. So, so what's this? I mean, it's like, oh, looking at this, like, that's weird. I mean, the pot, okay, that all looks great. That looks normal, but what is this, <laughs> right? Uh, so the strange looking object within the pot has the appearance of a shoe. It does have the appearance of a shoe, doesn't it? It has the appearance of a shoe with a little opening right here. It looks just like a shoe. Well, what is a shoe doing in the pot? If Yahuwah put this in the sky and he designed this and created this and, and, and trying to show us something figuratively, symbolically, um, what is he trying to say? What what is this? What might this represent? Well, I had to look it up. So um, let's go back to here. This is, I find this most significant. What is the shoe symbolic of? The Hebrew word for shoe is na'al, uh, or I think that's right, and is defined from strong concordance as a symbol of occupancy. Oh, well, okay, yes, well, what happened? It, the Babylonians came in and occupied the land, didn't they? So that actually fits. A refusal to marry or of something valueless. Well, that's pretty interesting. This is exactly what became of Judah when they were taken into captivity and their land was occupied by the Babylonians. Thus says Yahuwah, for three transgressions of Israel and for four, I will not turn away the punishment thereof because they scold the righteous for silver and the poor for a pair of shoes. Well, that's interesting. The numeric value, now I gotta keep going. I, I go as far as I can possibly go when I study the Masoth. I mean, I go as far as I can possibly go. You get those of you who, who are truth seekers and who love to study Torah and, and 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 find new truths and go deeper. You know how how rewarding this can be when you keep digging, you keep digging, you keep digging, and you go as far as you can take it. 
And then someone else comes along and takes it even further. <laughs> so that's pretty cool. So the numeric value of the Hebrew word for shoe equals 150. Oh, okay. Well, let's look up other words in Hebrew that equal 150 and see if we can find some meaning to this value for the shoe that's in the pot. <laughs> well, I found these words. All equaling in Hebrew, I have their English words here, but in Hebrew, all of these words equal 150, the same as the shoe. So what are these words? Affliction, oppress, mourn, eye, mouth, unclean, balances, trespass, fool, proud, leavened, hypocrite, force, king, and people. These are all words that relate to the story that is signified in the sign of Aquarius regarding the southern kingdom of Judah. I mean, you can associate all these words with the children of Israel, right? I mean, it's a perfect fit. So I thought that was pretty interesting, and I, I had to bring that out. Now, here's another one. Now, this is a very well-known nebula called the Helix Nebula in, in Aquarius. Uh, nicknamed the Eye of God, we would say the Eye of Elohim or the Eye of Yahuwah. Um, is this really there? I don't know. I haven't seen it myself. But again, I bring it out because it's a perfect fit in this story, uh, especially in the book of Jeremiah and some other minor prophets as well. It brings out this aspect of the eye. So in, in Proverbs 15, 3, to begin with, it says, the eyes of Yahuwah are in every place keeping watch on the evil and the good. Yes, that's true. Behold, the eyes of Yahuwah Elohim are on the sinful kingdom. Okay, now we're getting more, more direct. And I will destroy it from the face of the earth, yet I will not utterly destroy the house of Jacob, says Yahuwah. Okay, now it's talking directly about the eyes of Yahuwah upon the sinful kingdom that's being taken into captivity into Babylon. I have seen, I have seen, <laughs> you go to eyes, right? I have seen thine adulteries and thy nyings, the lewdness of thy whoredom, and thine abominations on the hills in the field. Woe unto thee, O Jerusalem. Okay, now we know it's specifically talking about Judah, don't we? The southern kingdom corresponding to the southern fish. Wilt thou not be made clean? When shall it once be? That's Jeremiah. Now, Jeremiah, I don't know if I'd bring this out here, but Jeremiah was known as the weeping prophet. Weeping, tears. So, um, again, I find this very significant that you have this eye in Aquarius relating to Judah and the eyes of Elohim, you know, on the sinful kingdom. Right. And seeing their adulteries and all their nines and all their fornication and, and, and all that they were doing, his eyes saw it all and continues to see it all. Right. Um, Wherefore, as I live, says Yahuwah Elohim, surely because thou hast defiled my sanctuary with all thy detestable things and with all thy abominations, therefore will I also diminish thee, neither shall mine eye spare, neither will I have any pity. Again, in Isaiah 3, 8, for Jerusalem is ruined and Judah is fallen because their tongue and their doings are against Yahuwah to provoke, what? The eyes of his glory. To provoke the eyes of his glory. So again, I just did a little word search on eye or eyes or seeing in the sign of um I mean, that might be related to, to what's being signified here in the sign of Aquarius. And so I'm reading through Jeremiah, I'm reading through Ezekiel, I'm reading through all these prophets that talk directly about this story of Judah and going into captivity and why they were going into captivity. And I kept coming across all these verses talking about the eye and seeing. And then we have this one in Deuteronomy 11. But the land, whether you go to possess it, is a land of hills and valleys and drinketh water of the rain of heaven, a land which Yahuwah thy Elohim careth for. The eyes of Yahuwah thy Elohim are always upon it. So the eyes of Yahuwah are always upon the land of Israel, the land of Judah here more specifically. From the beginning of the year, even unto the end of the year, his eyes are always on his land, on his people. 
Okay, now, as I was studying the eye and connecting it to Yahuwah and his eyes upon his people, I came across this very interesting uh, article that was taken from What Did Christ Really Look Like by Jack Anderson, which appeared in the Parade Magazine, April 18, 1965. Listen to this. In a startling document discovered in the Vatican Library, supposedly written to the Roman Senate, at the time of Christ by Publius Lentulus is this description of him. This is a man of noble and well-proportioned stature with a face full of kindness and firmness so that the beholders both love him and fear him. His hair is the color of wine and golden at the root, straight and without luster, but from the level of the ears curling and glossy divided down the center after the fashion of the Nazarenes. His forehead is even and smooth, his face without blemish and enhanced by a tempered bloom, his countenance ingenuous and kind. His beard is full of the same color as his hair and forked in form, his eyes blue, <laughs> blue and extremely brilliant. Wow, so this is a really good representation um, of, of what we're reading here, if, if this is a, an accurate description of the Messiah, I found that pretty interesting. Now, so I found this uh, online. Uh, according to astronomers, the famous Eye of God Nebula may actually be weeping tears of water. Well, when I saw that, I thought, oh my goodness, yeah, that's what this whole story is about. The weeping prophet Jeremiah. You know, uh, crying over the sins of his people, mourning. And, and here it says, that according to astronomers, the famous Eye of God Nebula may be actually weeping tears of water. And, and, and they point to this area right here in this nebula as a water building uh, molecule here in the Helix Nebula. Well, how significant is that? Right in the corner of the eye where the eye drops <laughs> drip down from. So I thought, wow, that's pretty interesting. And again, you know, Jeremiah was the weeping prophet. Oh, that my head were waters and my eyes a fountain of tears. So it fits the story. That I might weep the day and night for the slain of the daughter of my people. And then again, but if you will not hear it, my soul will weep in secret for your pride. My eyes will weep bitterly and run down with tears because the Lord's flock has been taken captive. So, I mean, it just fits. Uh, and then you have Yahushua weeping over Jerusalem. Now, as he, that was Yahushua, drew near, he saw the city and wept over it saying, if you had known, even you, especially in this your day, the thing that make for your peace, but now they are hidden from your eyes. It would appear then that not only might this eye represent the eye of Yahushua weeping over the people whom he loved, but also the weeping prophet Jeremiah, weeping for the sins of his people, the southern kingdom of Judah. Pretty interesting.